Hello and welcome to the worship service for St. John's Tarzana and Calvary and Canyon Country for this the eighth Sunday after Pentecost. This morning we'll follow the order of service as found printed in the service folder. You can download that off of the webpage or also you could follow along on page 38 in the front of the hymnal if you have that at home. Let us begin. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and also with you. We have come into the presence of God, who created us to love and serve him as his dear children. But we have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to his will. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed are they who take refuge in him. Your word, O oh Lord, is eternal. It stands firm in the heavens. Your faithfulness continues forever. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed are they who take refuge in him. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for planting in us the seed of your word. By your Holy Spirit, help us to receive it with joy and to bring forth fruits in faith and hope and love. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first lesson this morning comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, reading verses 10 through 13. Just as the rain and snow come down from the sky and do not return there unless they first water the earth, making it give birth and cause it to sprout so that it gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater, in the same way, my word that goes out from my mouth will not return to me empty. Rather, it will accomplish whatever I please and it will succeed in the purpose for which I sent it. Yes, you will go out with joy, and in peace you will be carried along. The mountains and the hills will break out in shouts of joy before you, and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Instead of thorns, a fir tree will grow up. Instead of briars, a myrtle tree will grow up. This will make a name for the Lord. It will serve as an everlasting sign that will not be cut off. This is the word of our God. We continue by reading responsively the words of Psalm 65. It's found printed in the service folder. Praise awaits you, O God in Zion. To you our vows will be fulfilled. O you who hear prayer, to you all men will come. When we were overwhelmed by sins, you forgave our transgressions. Blessed are those you choose and bring near to live in your courts. We are filled with the good things of your house, of your holy temple. You answer us with awesome deeds of righteousness, O God our Savior. 
the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas, who formed the mountains by your power, having armed yourself with strength, who stilled the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, and the turmoil of the nations. Those living far away fear your wonders. Where morning dawns and evening fades, you call forth songs of joy. You care for the land and water it. You enrich it abundantly. The streams of God are filled with water to provide the people with grain, for so you have ordained it. You drench its furrows and level its ridges. You soften it with showers and bless its crops. You crown the year with your bounty and your carts overflow with abundance. The grasslands of the desert overflow. The hills are clothed with gladness. The meadows are covered with flocks and the valleys are mantled with grain. They shout for joy and sing. Our second lesson this morning comes from Paul's letter to the Romans chapter 8, reading verses 18 through 25. For I conclude that our sufferings at the present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is going to be revealed to us. In fact, creation is waiting with eager longing for the sons of God to be revealed. For creation was subjected to futility, not by its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in the hope that even creation itself will be set free from slavery to corruption, in order to share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. For we know that all of creation is groaning with birth pains right up to the present time. And not only creation, but also we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit grown inwardly, while we eagerly await our adoption as sons, the redemption of our body. Indeed, it was for this hope we were saved. But hope that is seen is not hope, because who hopes for what he already sees? But if we hope for something we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with patient endurance. This is the word of our Lord. Alleluia. The word is very near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart, so you may obey it. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. These words are written that we may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Our gospel this day comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 11, reading verses 25 through 30. That same day, Jesus left the house and was sitting by the sea. A large crowd gathered around him. So he stepped into a boat and sat down, while all the people stood on the shore. He told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow. As he sowed, some seed fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it. Other seed fell on rocky ground where it did not have much soil. Immediately the seed sprang up because the soil was not deep. But when the sun rose, the seed was scorched. Because it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell among the thorns. The thorns grew up and choked it. But some seed fell on good ground and produced grain, some 100 times, some 60, and some 30 times more than what was sown. Whoever has ears to hear, let him hear. So listen carefully to the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This is the seed that was sown along the path. The seed that was sown on rocky ground is the person who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy, yet he is not deeply rooted and does not endure. 
when trouble or persecution comes because of the word, he immediately falls away. The seed that was sown among the thorns is the one who hears the word, but the worry of this world and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, and it produces no fruit. But the seed that was sown on the good ground is the one who continues to hear and understand the word. Indeed, he continues to produce fruit, some a hundred, some sixty, and so, some thirty times more than was sown. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. We continue with our hymn of the day, hymn 576, Spread, O Spread, the Mighty Word. Oh, spread the mighty word, spread the kingdom of the Lord. Everywhere his breath has given life to beings meant for him. Tell them how the Father's will made the world and keeps it still. How his only Son he gave All from sin and death to save Tell of our Redeemer's love Who forever does remove By his holy sacrifice all the guilt that on us lies. Tell them of the Spirit give now to guide us on to heaven, strong and holy, just and true, working both to will and do. Up the ripening field to see, mighty shall the harvest be. But the reapers still are few, great the work they have to do. Lord of harvest, grant anew joy and strength to work for you. Till the gathering nations call, see your light and heed your call. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the portion of scripture for our consideration this day is that first lesson from the book of Isaiah chapter 55 starting at verse 10. In it, Isaiah has a very simple but important message for us. God's word is effective. God's Word doesn't just convey meanings and messages. It is powerful. It accomplishes things. God's Word does work when He speaks it. This is the very Word that was used to create the heavens and the earth and all that is in them. Every word from the mouth of our God comes loaded with power, ready to act. Everywhere that word is heard, it has an effect. It's impossible for it not to. The comparison made is like rain and snow gets the ground anywhere it rains and snows wet so that plants can grow up out of it. It can't not make the ground wet. That's what it is. It's rain, it's snow, it's precipitation. 
anywhere God's word is proclaimed it's the same thing because of what it is the powerful word of God it acts it accomplishes his purposes it fulfills his desires there is power there power that is just as powerful as it ever was and continues to be powerful even to this very day the power of the Word of God cannot be overstated the things it can accomplish cannot be overspoken because it is the Word of God himself and even when it is proclaimed and it sounds like it falls on deaf, deaf ears it's still accomplishing his purposes it still stands as a judgment and condemnation that they heard the truth and did not receive it but that's not the primary reason God speaks his word the primary reason he has spoken and he has promised is to save us to bring us joy so that we're led forth in peace as Isaiah said that is really the most amazing thing about the powerful Word of God more so even then that it created the universe and that it gives us life and breath and being is that the message God wants to proclaim in that word the proclamation and the promise he has made and has given that power to is the message of salvation he could have just proclaimed his law and given us a list of rules and regulations and how we needed to live in order to be perfect the way he is perfect but he knew that we couldn't do that and so he doesn't give us a list of ways to get back into his good graces instead he gives us a message of love and forgiveness based on the work that he himself did through the sending of Jesus the Lord gives us a message that our failure to keep the law is made up for by Christ's perfect keeping of the law he's become our substitute he gives us the message that the good we have not done Jesus has done for us as he was perfectly holy and righteous all his time here on earth he gives us the message that because of his love he has taken our punishment on himself he was crushed for our transgressions he was punished for our guilt and speaking of that guilt he has removed it from us as far as the East is from the West the message of God's powerful word is that in Jesus we have forgiveness full and free from every sin we've ever committed we have forgiveness full and free for every good deed we have left undone we have forgiveness full and free for every bit of guilt that we have earned and deserved all because it was his good pleasure to love us to save us to be our Redeemer he proclaims this message of joy and peace so that we know we are his people and that he still is leading us out into further and greater joy day after day Isaiah mentioned it there you will go out in joy and be led forth in peace the mountains and hills will burst into song before you the trees of the field will clap their hands 
when we hear about being let out in joy and peace, we might think back to how God has done this for his people before. He's freeing them from slavery in Egypt. Or he's calling them back from exile in Babylon. Maybe, as we apply these words to ourselves, we think of being let out in joy, looking forward to when we can finally leave our homes from this pandemic and gather together before the Lord for worship again. And while these are all wonderful and joyous occasions, they're way too small for what God is talking about here. His love and the things he has done for his people are so much greater, so much bigger than just those small leadings out. We're talking about the kind of thing that the entirety of creation rejoices over. We're talking about wonderful acts for which the Lord will receive praise and honor and glory and thanks for eternity. We're talking about something that is a monument to his love that will never be torn down or removed. Something that testifies to the glory of our God forever. It is the life to come with him. It is the eternity he has won for us as his people. It is nothing less than the ability for us to live with him day and night in his temple, face to face with light that shines unending. It is eternal life with him in heaven that does not end, has no sorrow, feels none of the corruption of sin. That reference there to the thorns and thistles or briars being turned into firs and myrtles. Those briars and thorns, that was part of the corruption of sin, part of the consequence of that. But what the Lord has prepared for us removes that and replaces it with trees that are evergreen. Plants that live and are full of life all the time. Because this is what our Lord has won for us in Christ. This is the monument to his glory. It is his love shown in giving us eternal life. It is the joy and peace we will know as we are free from sin and all of its effects. It is the joy of knowing that word of God, knowing that Lord who loves us, knowing the Savior who has redeemed us. This is the message of that mighty, powerful word. This is the message that changes hearts, that makes it possible for us to be Christ's ambassadors to others, makes us able to go and do the Great Commission. Because that job of telling all and making disciples of all nations would be beyond us if we were not equipped with the mighty word. The word that always accomplishes its God's purpose. The word spoken by the Almighty himself. The word through which the Holy Spirit works day in and day out every time it is proclaimed. My brothers and sisters, we have this precious treasure, this source of our confidence, the very word of God himself. And he promises us he has saved us. He proclaims to us he loves us. He assures us of the eternal life we have with him. Let us trust that powerful word of our God that never returns to him without doing what he wants it to do. 
and let us continue to share it, knowing that our God is working in it and its power remains just as strong as ever. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Let us join in confessing our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us join in the prayer of the church. O oh Lord our God, you are wise and powerful, good and gracious. Your mercies are new every morning. Each day you open your hand and provide for the needs of your children on earth. We praise you for every grace and blessing. Strengthen your church in all the world. Let your comforting message of salvation in Christ Jesus be proclaimed to troubled souls everywhere. Use our ministries and offerings to extend your healing and your hope. We bring you requests for the various structures of our society. Bless our national, state, and local governments. Grant us civil servants who are worthy of honor and respect. Grant prosperity to our businesses and industries. Give employers a sense of fairness toward their workers, and employees a feeling of joy and pride in their workmanship. Help us find satisfaction in all work well done. Invigorate the schools of our land. Give success to every effort that helps students read, think, and communicate in ways that will promote an informed and responsible citizenry. Arouse curious minds to discover the wonders of your created order. Give us teachers and students who pursue excellence. Strengthen the families of our country. Give fathers and mothers a renewed commitment to be good parents. Give children and young people the wisdom to regard their parents as your representatives. Lead us to love one another as you have loved us. Hear us, Lord, as we bring you also our private petitions. Gracious Father, we pray boldly as Jesus taught with the confidence that you will hear and with the faith that you will respond for our welfare. Amen. We join also in the prayer you taught us, Lord. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord God, our Heavenly Father, pour out the Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us strong in your grace and truth. Protect and comfort us in all temptation. And bestow on us your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another. Serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen, amen, amen. We close with our final hymn from All That Dwell Below the Skies, number 250. Well, below the skies, let the creator's praise arise. Alleluia, alleluia. Let the redeemer's name be sung through every land by every tongue. Alleluia. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Eternal are your mercies, Lord. Eternal is your glorious word. Alleluia. Alleluia, your praise shall sound from shore to shore, till suns shall rise and set no more. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Once again, thank you for joining us for worship this week. As always, if anyone would desire to receive the Lord's Supper, please feel free to contact me so we can set up a time for private communion. With that, God's blessings on your week. <laughs>